very warm greetings of the day to each one of you ladies and gentlemen it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all for this video presentation on an important subject that is learning distances number of accidents have occurred due to inability of the pilots to stop the aircraft before the end of the runway and also due to aircraft wearing out of the runway because of various reasons aviation safety india considers its duty and responsibility to refresh and add to the knowledge of the pilots for prevention of any approach and landing accidents due to runway excursion there have been number of landing accidents due to runway excursion that is the aircraft could not be stopped before the end of the runway it is called runway overrun or the aircraft has gone out of the runway to left or right runway excursion can occur during landing and during reject takeoff dgca of circular 09 of 2017 approach and landing accident reduction training toolkit covers various aspects of landing distances and runway excursion in detail it is essential that the operators and pilots are knowledgeable about the approach landing accident reduction training toolkit now we shall have a look at actual landing distance definition actual landing distance is the distance used in landing and breaking to a complete stop on a dry runway after crossing the runway threshold at 50 feet actual landing distances are determined during certification flight tests without the use of thrust reversers and are included in the flight manual of the aircraft next definition of required landing distance required landing distance is the distance derived by applying a factor to the actual landing distance required landing distances are used for dispatch purposes that is for selecting the destination airport and alternate airports now we shall discuss factors affecting landing distances the required landing distance is affected by runway condition wind conditions runway slope density altitude type of braking anti skid system final approach speed landing technique weight of the aircraft standard operating procedures deviations minimum equipment equipment list oblique dispatch deviation guide conditions that is inoperative thrust reversers brake unit and diskid and ground spoilers system malfunction which may lead to increasing final approach speed affecting lift reducing and braking ability now we shall have a look at different type of runway conditions and their effect on the required landing distances runway condition has a major impact on the landing distance a wet or contaminated runway will increase the landing distance 
due to hydroplaning and consequent lack of braking effectiveness. During 2019, in the monsoon months, there were four runway or run oblique excursion accidents within 72 hours due to runway condition in our country. The unfortunate accident at Kodi Kode in 2020 also possibly occurred due to weather and runway conditions. Now we shall have a look at the landing distance required on wet runway. On a wet runway, the landing distance will increase by a factor of 1.3 to 1.4. Assuming that the actual landing distance of an aircraft is 2,000 feet, the required landing distance of this aircraft will increase from 2,000 feet to 2,600 to 2,800 feet on a wet runway. Landing distance required on a standing water or slush contaminated runway. On a standing water or slush contaminated runway, the landing distance will increase by a factor of 2 to 2.3. Thus, the required landing distance will increase from 2,000 feet to 4,000 to 4,600 feet on a standing water or slush contaminated runway. Now, we shall discuss landing distance required on a Compacted snow covered runway. On a compacted snow covered runway, the landing distance will increase by a factor of 1.6 to 1.7. Thus, the required landing distance of the aircraft will increase from 2000 feet to 3200 to 3400 feet on a compacted snow covered runway. Landing distance required on an ice contaminated runway. On an icy runway, the landing distance will increase by a factor of 3.5 to 4.5. Thus, the required landing distance of the aircraft will increase from 2,000 feet to 7,000 to 9,000 feet. So, you can well appreciate that. Landing on a wet, contaminated, and icy runway will require longer landing distances depending on the runway condition. The pilots must keep these factors in mind and must remember the landing distance available and landing distance required. Now we shall discuss effect on landing distance due to air speed or the runway threshold. Under a normal flare and touchdown, a 10% increase in final approach speed results in a 20% increase in landing distance. For your landing reference speed is 100 knots or the threshold and your actual speed is 110 knots. That is 10% increase in the speed. The required landing distance will increase by a factor of 20%. That is, the required landing distance will be 2,400 feet instead of 2,000 feet. Some of you may know that the aircraft which crashed at Mangalore in 2010 was at the speed of 161 knots at the threshold instead of the correct speed of 144 knots at the threshold. That is more than 10% of the correct speed. Effect on landing distance due to height of the runway threshold. As you all know that the standard height of the threshold is 50 feet. For every 50 feet increase in height over the threshold, the landing distance required will increase by 
1,000 feet. Just for your information, the height of the aircraft which crashed at Mangalore in 2010 was 200 feet over the threshold. Now we shall discuss the effect of density altitude on landing distances. First, we'll see what all elements affect density altitude. First one is temperature, then is humidity and elevation. Please remember that higher the temperature, higher the humidity, and higher the elevation, the density will be lower and the density altitude will be higher. Higher density altitude will cause higher true air speed, higher ground speed, and as such longer landing distances. For every thousand feet increase in density altitude, additional distance of 50 to 100 feet will be required depending on the runway condition. Now we shall discuss the effect of runway slope on landing distances. Runway slope has a direct effect on landing distance. 1% down slope, downhill slope increases landing distance by 10%. Next, effect of wind conditions on landing distances. Tailwind increases the ground speed of an aircraft and thus a longer runway distance will be required. For a 5 knot tailwind component, the takeoff distance should be multiplied by 1.25 and for 10 knots tailwind component by 1.55. The effect of flare technique on landing distance. Flare technique also has a bearing on the landing distance required. Extending the flare that is allowing the aircraft to float for long in order to make a smooth touchdown or to reduce speed will increase the landing distance. For example, a 5% increase in final approach speed increases landing distance by 10% if a normal flare and touchdown is conducted, 30% if touchdown is delayed in trying to reduce speed by extending the flare. For your knowledge, CRJ 700 runway or an accident occurred at Kanpur Airport during the month of July due to the pilot allowing the aircraft to float for long and consequently touching down after consuming almost 4,500 feet of runway, which was 9,000 feet long. In this case, the significant tailwind conditions caused high ground speed which led to the long float time. Next, we'll discuss effect on landing distances due to ground spoilers not armed. If the ground spoilers are not armed or do not get extended, the required landing distance will increase by a factor of 1.3. The ground spoilers must be armed as per SOPs. In addition, it is essential for the pilots to monitor and confirm the extension of ground spoilers visually. Next, we'll talk about effect of delay in lowering nose wheel on landing distances. Delay in lowering the nose wheel landing gear 
to the runway will maintain lift on the aircraft resulting in less load on the main landing gear and thus less braking capability leading to increase in landing distance effect of system malfunction on landing distances system malfunctions such as hydraulic system low pressure may result in multiple adjustments to landing speed and landing distance such as increased landing speed because of inoperative slats oblique flaps will increase landing distances effect of weight on the landing distance heavier landing weight require higher approach speeds due to which the aircraft will have greater momentum and require longer landing distance a 10% increase in landing weight has the effect of increasing the landing distance by about 10% next we'll talk about crosswind effect on landing distance a crosswind situation will affect takeoff and landing performance mainly because of the reduced headwind component if the wind is 30 degrees of the runway heading the headwind is effectively reduced by 15% and if the wind is 45 degrees off the headwind is reduced by 30% during strong crosswind conditions on a contaminated runway the aircraft may wear off the runway especially when reverse thrust is used if reverse th- thrust can't be used due to strong crosswind conditions fearing runway excursion then the landing distance will obviously increase to conclude ladies and gentlemen in view of the large number of landing accidents due to runway excursion it is essential for the pilots to be knowledgeable about the hazards associated with the approach and landing of the aircraft runway or run can also take place during reject takeoff situation it needs no emphasis that the operators pilots and atc controllers have a major role in preventing runway excursion related accidents the pilots and atc controllers should be fully knowledgeable and situationally aware about the various safety risks which can lead to compromise in safety during approach and landing the pre-flight briefing should cover various aspects related to weather and runway condition runway length available weight of the aircraft at the time of landing importance of stabilized approaches height and speed or the threshold landing and flare technique density altitude of the runway hydro planning effect of tailwind and crosswind use of reverse thrust and ground spoilers and discant auto brakes pedal brakes and risk of locked wheels failure or reduced effectiveness of system like reverse thrust auto extension of spoilers automatic brakes and pedal brakes
emphasis must be laid on good knowledge and awareness of the pilots about off circular 09 of 2017 alar training toolkit importance of crm and crew coordination division of duties and responsibilities between the pf and the pm need for extra alertness and full involvement of both the crew members proper approach briefing should be carried out covering the important aspects like weather and runway conditions meeting stabilized approach criteria missed approach use of automation correct height and speed at the threshold use of reverse thrust confirming extension of the ground spoilers application of the auto oblique pedal braking close monitoring of the rate of deceleration and distance to go and timely taking over from auto brakes to apply pedal brakes pilots must remember that if the runway is contaminated strong tailwinds or crosswind conditions are reported and there is difficulty in achieving a stabilized approach due to turbulence and wind shear then the pilots must not hesitate to carry out missed approach and diversion the air traffic controllers must remember that they have a very important role to play in helping the pilots to execute a safe approach and landing particularly in adverse weather conditions during adverse weather approach and landing conditions the air traffic controllers should be extra with alert and vigilant safety and efficiency of the approach and landing can be assured to a great extent if the air traffic controllers provide timely and accurate information to the pilots about the runway and weather condition including rubber deposits presence of low level wind shear winds particularly tail and cross and any limitation on the use of the full length of the runway the air traffic controllers must keep in mind that the pilots are generally under stress while conducting an approach and landing in bad weather on a contaminated runway with unpredictable wind conditions and turbulence it should be remembered that the pilots should not be given a last minute runway change the atc controllers should keep in mind that in bad weather conditions the pilots require longer distance on funnels to establish a stabilized approach thank you very much ladies and gentlemen aviation safety india is making concerted efforts and is taking proactive steps to promote safety of aviation operations in the country unless we receive the cooperation and support from the operators pilots and air traffic controllers we cannot succeed in our efforts please be informed that aviation safety management society of india is not a commercial organization and our only interest is in your safety
so please go through this video with the intention of benefiting from it so that you can fly safely and efficiently wishing you all safe and happy flying many many happy learnings jai hind